Good afternoon, everybody. In the lab today, we are going to talk about environmental monitoring from the food microbiology perspective. So, environmental monitoring consists in the collection of samples from the environment where foods are produced. These places can be either a manufacturing plant or a commercial kitchen. The lack of good manufacturing practices may contribute to the contamination of finished product. At the end, one of the main purposes of the environmental monitoring in a food processing plant is to evaluate the effectiveness of the disinfection slash cleaning procedure and work practices in order to avoid the presence of foodborne pathogens that can harm human health. So, environmental monitoring can be divided in four different sampling zones. So, uh, first we have the zone one. The zone one involves food contact surfaces, for example, conveyors, buckets, utensils, and plowing hands. <clears throat> then we have the zone two. The zone two involves non-food contact surfaces that are in close proximity to food and food contact surfaces, for example. Equipment framework, drip shields slash housing, control panels slash bottoms, pipes over zone one, computer screens and maintenance tools. Then we have the zone three. So the zone three says that more uh, remote non-food contact surfaces that are in the process area and could lead to contaminations of zone one and zone two. For example, floors, walls, ceilings, houses, air handling units, drains, foot mats slash bath, forklift, brooms, mops, pellets. And finally, we have the zone 4. So the zone 4 involves non-food contact surfaces outside the processing area from which environmental pathogens can be introduced into the processing environment. For example, locker, locker or break rooms, offices, warehouses, freezers, cold storage, restrooms, loading docks, and maintenance shop. The setup of environmental monitoring program starts with identifying and documenting all physical areas which could be potential pathogen sources like raw materials, storage and shipping areas, and cross contamination vectors, which includes employees, equipment, and pests. So these areas and vectors should be sur surveyed, controlled, and when possible, eliminate. Thus, the implementation of effective controls, which includes microbiological sampling of high risk areas will be part of the program. Sampling for pathogens or indicator microorganisms in food contact areas during production is also essential. This offers confidence in the safety of the manufactured product. The environmental monitoring program helps manufacturers to be aware of the plant environment and to measure the efficiency of the pathogen prevention program. Furthermore, in an environmental monitoring program, it is not only critical to test for pathogens, but also for the overall effectiveness of cleaning and sanitizing procedures. The Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA, is the institution in charge to perform environmental sampling in food producing places. The FDA may conduct environmental sampling of an establishment for any of the following reasons. For cost, which involves the investigation of an establishment with an indication of a potential serious public health risk. Also, a history of concern may include, for example, prior suspected or confirmed linkage to human illnesses, recall or sized contaminating product. The establishment should show a failure to implement an effective environmental monitoring plan. Then, by commodity-based assignments. 
Here, the objective is gain insight into how widespread certain harmful bacteria may be in the manufacturing environment or environments across an industry to assess conditions and practices and to gauge complete compliance with food safety regulations. And also for risk-based prioritization. The FDA has developed a process for considering establishment specific potential risk to the public health which implies cr criteria related to food hazard pairs. As an example, frequency of outbreaks associated with a food, likelihood of contamination, bacterial growth potential and food consu consumption pattern and establishment-specific compliance history. So, recalls of ready-to-eat food products due to contamination with pathogens such as Listeria monocytogenes and Salmonella species are a big concern in food industry and can be often attributed to environmental sources. Effective environmental monitoring programs, particularly those linked to specific goals such as sanitation, validation and verification can significantly reduce the risk of these recalls. So now we are going to talk about the environmental monitoring collection techniques. So surface samples are collected by wiping or swabbing a moistened absorptive medium across a non porous surface. The FDA investigators use sterile sponges or swabs to collect environmental samples from both food contact surfaces, for example, slicers, mixers, utensils, or conveyors, and non-food contact surfaces, as an example, floors, drains, carts, or equipment housing. There are several absorptive media available, but non-cotton, like radium, polyester, etc., wipes or swabs are preferred because of applied laboratory procedures. So next, you are going to see some examples of environmental monitoring collection techniques. First, we have the sterile sponge swabs. The swab is very good for reaching hard to sample crevices, cracks, cordons, and piping in the production line. These spots can be difficult to clean and sanitize frequently, making them critical sampling sites. The collection media must be sterile and used with a sterile wetting agent such as water, saline solution or phosphate buffer solution. Because of the small surface area of swabs, they are best utilized for smooth surfaces that do not have a large accumulation of dust. A larger surface area, about 100 square centimeters can generally be sampled with white ma materials. So plastic templates are often used for accurate and consistent surface sampling conforming to all current standards. The template helps to define sample size, allowing the investigator to be sure of swabbing exactly the right surface area. So now I'm going to explain how to perform a sampling collection using a sterile sponge swab. So the step number one is to shake stick to end of back. Then number two, you have to tear the back open. So 
you need to know that you need you have to add a sterile diluent or broth to dry the sponge. However, some sponge swab come with a diluted included. There, you have to squeeze the bag to open. Then, aseptically, aseptically grabs the stick above the thumb stop line to remove the sponge. After that, the step number four says that you have to aseptically swab across the entire sampling surface. And in the step number five, you have to turn the sponge over, then change direction um, for 90 degrees. Then aseptically swab the same sample surface. After you finish, Step number five, you have to aseptically place the sponge into the back up to the thumb stop. Then hold the sponge in a place inside the bag. Then you have to bend the stick to break. Allow the sponge to drop in the bag and then discard that stick. After that, you have to fold the bag to close. Then you have to fold ends of blue wires inward. And finally, it's ready to be analyzed. Then we have the sterile cotton swabs. These are usually profiled bottles that come sterilized. The swab tip sits on the broth, which allows for release of organisms from the swab, swab bot. Then we have the surface contact testing plates also known as hydraulic plates. So these plates can be used in dry surfaces such as floors, walls, textiles and working garments of personal in control areas to determine the total aerobic microbial count, yeast and mold count and total count for specific microorganisms. The rodac plates are prepared so that the agar surface is convex for sampling flat surfaces. Then we also have sample cups, sterile scoops and sterile spatulas that can be used to collect samples in a food processing plant. Now we are going to talk about the flow testing protocols that can be used to perform uh, environmental monitoring test. So at the time of sampling, you have to moisten and swap the head in the broth and gently press out the excess solution against the interior wall of the bag. Then you have to rub the swab head slowly and thoroughly over an area of about 50 cm squares, but um, that is gonna is gonna depend on what you want to sample. For example, you can use a template of a hundred centimeter squares or you can sample just five centimeter squares kind of depends what you want then you have to rinse the swab head in the broth and press out excess solution after that you have to stomach it for two minutes at 230 rpm after that you have to prepare serial dilution from the sample then you have to spread uh, 0.1 uh, ml of the undiluted sample and 0.1 ml from each dilution tube into PCA plates. After that, you have to incubate the plates at 35 Celsius for 24 hours. Um, alternatively, you also can incubate at 30 Celsius for 48 hours. This is going to allow growth of both mesophilic and psychotrophic microorganisms. After incubation, uh, you have to inspect the PCA plates. Then you have to observe the variation in colonies and count the colonies. And this is important. You need to report the results as CFU per centimeter square. So now I'm going to explain how to ca calculate CFU per centimeter square. So you need to multiply the average of CFU per plate with the volume of the original suspension. And what is our original suspension? Well, it's the sterile broth used to moisture the swab um, that we use to collect the sample. 
And then we need to divide that by the multiplication of the total surface area with the dilution factor. So let's say that we have a, an average of CFU per plate of 85 on a 10 to the minus 4 dilution. Then we sample 100 centimeters square and the volume that we used uh, to moisture the swab was 10 ml of buff peptone water. So we need to multiply the 85 uh, with the 10 ml of buff peptone water and then divide that by the multiplication of the 100 cm square with the dilution factor, in this case 10 to the minus 4. So at the end we are going to have 85,000 CFU per centimeter square and if we convert that to log of CFU per centimeter square we are going to have 4.92.